so I'm gonna have to get new wipers. Um, if conditions continue like this, um, I need to be able to see properly. So as you can see, my wipers are not completely wiping away. It's obstructing my view, so um, yeah, and the snow is already kind of covering the ground. So we're gonna stop, stop into Valvoline and get this oil changed and also uh, get some new wipers. Just like that, we're done. things but when it comes to this point you never know when it's just gonna explode in your armpit. That's the last rubber band I had up if you know you know. Well I got in late last night. It's another early morning but it is time to go check out the car. Official, I am the new owner of a Mazda FD RX-7. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. On this channel, I showcase the automotive culture and the positive impact it has on its community. Huge update. Um, as you saw, this process has taken about six months um, to get the car from getting into a, a decent uh, state to bring it here. Uh, back to Minnesota. On today's video, I wanted to do a basic walk around of what I just bought um, and kind of show you guys the good, the bad, and the ugly. All right, let's check it out. I purchased a 1993 Mazda RX-7. Um, it does have a engine swap, the engine of choice that I'll go into detail that it obtains is a uh, an LS1 motor. Um, so this is not one for the purists, I apologize. Uh, in advance that your feelings are it got hurt um, but you're gonna have to get over it and so on the exterior pretty basic it has 18 by eight and a half bbs lms um, has some led uh, projector headlights um, that i'm not sure if i'm in love with yet but um, we will see as this progress goes um, it does have a vented carbon fiber hood um, and that's really about it for the exterior let's hop into the interior all right, so for the interior, um, I apologize for the darkness or the, the contrast and light between my garage and the outside. Um, so the interior is in, is in a little bit of a disarray right now just for the simple fact that um, I did have line lock um, installed in it. So um, he, he had the, the wires kind of prepped for me. Um, the center console has to come back out anyways. I have a head unit that I'm hoping to install. Um, and then... Um, with the engine swap, the engine management system is Haltech. Uh, however, if you see that, that scared the crap out of me when I first drove it. And so, um, so I have parts coming in for that. I ordered a new OEM hood, um, and then also the um, dash uh, display for um, for the Haltech IC7. And so I'll be doing that in another video. Um, but yeah, it's it's very much so of a project, um, but. The engine is very stout, and we'll hop into that next. All right, so the engine, like I said, is a LS1. Um, it's a brand new 5.3 block. It is ported out to 5.7. Uh, full ARP bolts, smelling oiling pump, uh, upgraded double timing chain, timing cover, bolt kits, crank bolts, uh, bell housing, all the ARP bolts essentially. Internals are also built. Um, so it has LS2 Texas Speed port and polished heads. It has um, has custom bullet. Uh, it has Brian Tooley's custom uh, camshaft um, with max lift springs, retainers, um, push rods, all that sort of fun stuff. 
has the Weiss go 3.9 uh, bore, so it's a 3.622 inch stroke uh, with 12cc flat top piston set. So it's got LSH beam rods um, with the, the ARP bolts as well. Uh, King race bearings. It has the Holly Sniper. It has the Holly Sniper high ram uh, low profile sheet metal manifold. It has the Edelbrock uh, throttle body with TPS 92 millimeters. Has Weiss go upgraded wrist pins. And in ra uh, race baffle oil pan um, with the F body style pickup. Uh, Z06 water pump. LS9 head gasket. Um, and that's kind of the internals. And that's not including these two little puppies down here. So it is a twin turbo. Um, and currently what we've ran it at, um, to get it shipped up, the agreement was I needed to make sure, and it really insurance to myself, was to make sure that the engine was stout, everything was connected properly, the Helltech was properly plugged into everything, and I'm not you know picking up something that is more of a mess and a headache. And so I think that's why it took a while. They also run a shop, which makes sense. They have to run their business. I get it. Um, so that's part of the reason why it took so long to get here. Um, I'm very happy. I'm very happy with the engine build. Uh, the, the only concept that's still kind of holding me back is being in an old car. <laughs> I forgot what that's like. I forgot what 90, 1993 uh, provided. So, um, but... Nonetheless, I mean, like the craftsmanship in this car or in this engine um, was really a steal. Uh, I mean, hard lines here, uh, you just you don't see it built like this anymore. And, um, you know, the story was really, really interesting. And uh, maybe I'll share that into another uh, video if you guys are really interested in it. It's a really, really cool story on this um, RX-7. All right, so let's talk about the turbo setup. So the manifold exhaust and air pipe piping um, are all custom. Um, it has all vibrant stainless steel um, and aluminum parts. The intercooler um, is a treadstone intercooler capable of 1300 horsepower. So the turbos are a Borg Werner um, exhaust housing, which is a 0.88 AR. Um, it has two TL MVR 44 millimeter waste gates. It has two TL Q50 millimeter blow off valves. Um, there's a custom uh, catch can. Uh, coolant overflow, um, and it has a Mishimoto radiator and fan. So the fun doesn't stop. So fueling, um, this was another big reason why I really like this build was the fueling was upgraded. So it has the Radium Engineering triple pump surge tank. Um, it has four Walbro 485 fuel pumps in there. Um, the injectors that are in the car up front are 2200, um, and it's just plumbed very neatly. Um, let me move some of these interior pieces um but i mean it's just i mean it's the craftsmanship and that's what it comes down to right so it was obviously a personal card to the the performance shop so um you know this type of craftsmanship is not cheap um let's keep moving on all right so the transmission is a t56 which is out of a 2000 ford mustang f body it has twin disc clutch with light and flywheel this was previously built at tick with magnum upgraded parts it has a custom race drive shaft in it as you can see the ronin full cross members mounts for the subframe rear end kit and axles the thing that i'm jacking it from is a 8.8 .8 rear end and is a perfect uh, combination for the uh, the engine. All right, so suspension. Um, it has Siki solid rear end mounts with a diff plate, as we saw. It's on teen coilovers. Also had Megan rear lower control arms. So let's talk about safety. All new brake calipers, new brake lines, uh, stainless steel uh, lines, brand new brake rotors and pads. Um, it, it also has a front bumper bar. And then in the interior, you have a four point cage um, with harness bar. Um, obviously, you have these no-name racing seats, um, and then obviously with custom mounts and sliders, so not too bad. So the Haltech is an Elite 2000. Um, it does have a dual wideband kit. Uh, purpose for that is that I wanted there to be a chill mode and a kill mode. It does, as you see, have the IC7 display. All the Haltech stuff is conveniently in that compartment. One is the battery, and then, um, sorry, this is the Haltech, and then the other one is the battery. Um, so very, very clean 
install. And a fun fact, I know some may be assuming that the LS1 is a much heavier engine than the 13B or even the 20B with Tranny. The LS1 with the T56 transmission is about the same weight as a 13B with Tranny and lighter than a 20B with the transmission. The cast iron uh, engines are about 150 pounds heavier with the T56 and around 225 to 250 pounds heavier with an automatic. So that being said, the thought process behind this car was to get a fun track toy, a nice roll race machine essentially, um, with fairly inexpensive parts uh, to replace and, and whatnot, just making sure that all the bulk of the cost was already done for me. And then maintenance wise, replacement, that sort of thing, not a terrible amount. Um, and a lot more reliable than the rotary engine and easier easier to find parts, guys. I mean, I could replace the whole engine block from, from a LS1 in the junkyard. Granted, this is brand new and I wouldn't wanna do that and I'd be really bummed. But in hindsight, looking down the line of, of what I would really be using this car for um, is abuse, essentially. This was a big uh, factor of me getting this, so. With that being said, thanks again, you guys, for checking out this video. I'm pretty excited slash nervous with this car. Um, looking forward to being able to provide some more content for you guys. Um, the next steps on this car is going to be getting it aligned. Um, it has not been aligned. It has spherical bearings um, in the suspension, so I want to make sure that's all dialed down. So the next videos you'll see on this is how I am planning to set it up uh, for a race alignment. Um, with that being said, thanks again for checking out the video and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.